Hi, and welcome to Talk RX with Dr. Neha. Uh, this week I have a special guest, Rochelle, and we are filming in Costa Rica at Rochelle's Koya Retreat, Q O Y A, Koya. And stay tuned on that one because we're, you're going to learn all about that in a moment. But I asked Rochelle to um, come here and kind of have a conversation and a dialogue about Koya because it's had such a huge impact uh, for me personally, on me really getting in my body and enjoying my body. So you all know, uh, for those of you that have been following me for uh, a while, you know that I'm a physician. Um, and so I'm in my head and I work with people on what's wrong with their body, right? And help fi fixing that physically. I also have moved into helping the mental, emotional realm as well. Um, but what I didn't do was get in my body to enjoy being in my body. Mm -hmm. And that is something that uh, you, Rochelle, have helped me with. So welcome. Mm -hmm. I'm honored to be here with you and so inspired by you. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Could you just, um, because you do it so well, mm -hmm. could you please um, tell everyone what Koya is and how you started this? Yes. So Koya is based on a really simple idea. And that idea is that through movement, we remember. Mm -hmm. And we remember our essence is wise, wild, and free. So on a surface level, wise, wild, and free also draw reference to the movement forms that we practice in Koya. Wise calls on the wisdom traditions of yoga, wild and the creative, authentic expression of dance. So less performance dance and more like you're folding laundry and there's music playing and you weren't planning on having a dance party, but then all of a sudden you were. <laughs> it's, that, it's that authentic expression where the music comes in and without choreographing or strategizing mm -hmm. your body is inspired to move. Yeah. So that's the ideal place we're looking for when we talk about dance. And then free is really, like you said, expanding your capacity to actually enjoy being in your body. And that's mm -hmm. based on the idea that what you look for is often what you see. Yeah. So yep. it's not to, you know, to devalue the, the challenges and the healing journeys that we go on in the body and how uncomfortable it can be. But it is to have a space in Koya where you look for, is there anything I could do right now to make this feel a little bit better? Yep. And when I find something that actually feels good, can I expand my capacity to linger there? And just like you do a bicep curl to get your biceps stronger, yep. A lot of things take practice, and a lot of us aren't wired in a way yeah. to stay with the positive feelings in the body. So we start to practice. And then it's also really a practice of self-honoring because in Koya, there's no way you can do it wrong. The way you know you're doing it right is that it feels good, that it feels honest and true. So there's this thing, if it doesn't feel good, don't keep doing it. <laughs> and and that's pretty um, oppositional to right. the, like the antiquated, no pain, no gain. Yep. And at the same time, I'm not saying that there's not incredible value in, right. you know, people's Iron Man trainings or right. this or that. And that's beautiful. Right. That's just not what this is. Right. And so how Koya developed was I was sitting in a women's circle and one woman rose her hand and she said, everyone is telling me I need to get out of my head and into my body. And she was a successful lawyer in New York City. And she just she said, I honestly don't even know what that means. Yep. And she said, for me, if it's fitness, you know, I've already tried. For me, she said, gym is torture. Yoga is boring. I can never get in the right level dance class. She said, I tried pole dancing. I hurt my back. And so she tried all these different things right. and she was never getting in her body and she didn't even know what that meant. And so what I heard is she really wanted this experience of herself. And in this context, for me, it's like capital letter S self, that, that infinite eternal spark finding home in the ever-changing landscape of the body. Yeah. So that those moments when you feel like your mental perception, your emotional experience, your spiritual awareness all come into the present moment of the sensation in the body. So mm -hmm. it's really not about burning calories. It's not really about, you know, toning my thighs. Yeah. Those happen just from movement. Yeah. You get all the those byproducts. Yeah. But the reason you go is... You show up however you are, but in Koya, you leave feeling more like yourself. Mm, so you get that experience that. of actually feeling yourself. Yeah, feeling more authentic. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, and I, you know what I would really say about this is um, that I 
really mastered left brain uh, with all my education and all of that. And then it was a big leap. But what people have said to me is, how, are, how do I get from my brain to my heart? And so I spent a lot of time learning about emotions and communication and trying to figure out how do I bridge this gap, you know? Um, and then when, you, when I met you, it was more like, okay, great. I'm glad your head and your heart are connected. Let's drop into your body and your being. And I, I would have to say that, you know, while it's not about strengthening your thighs and losing, you know, calorie, you know, burning calories and all that, those are, those are side effects. Uh, the goal is to be authentically you and feel comfortable in your own skin. Yet all of those other things happen. <laughs> and they're not, it's not torturous because I don't have to focus on them. Mm -hmm. So I guess <laughs> what I would say, and you, and the coolest thing also is not only do you get a whole community of women, um, to be in community with that are not judging and, you know, comparing and competing, but are actually, um, for the first time in this retreat, I've been doing this with you for more than a year now. And this, in the first time for me in this retreat, I noticed not noticing what was happening in the room. I had a sense of it, but I used to know exactly what was happening in the room, what everyone else was doing. I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, but I knew what everyone else was doing. And this time I felt the first time of just dropping in and the freedom to know where I end and others begin and stay out of their way so I don't bump into them if I'm in the room with them, but not being concerned about others. Mm. And so it was a really uh, wonderful uh, moment of feeling authentic. Mm. So well, that makes me think of, I love the work that you do and I've learned a lot from you in mm. going through the different stages of listening and the levels. And one of the things that I often say is, you know, we practice this in conversation. Like, how yeah. can I be really authentic and honest? Yep. And now in Koya, we start to practice that authenticity through the expression and movement of the body. Mm. And so a lot of times, if you look at a child yeah. and how authentic they are, yeah. you know, there's so much changing. It's, it's, it's very nonlinear. Yeah. And if you look at an adult, it can be, you know, literally feeling so much but potentially having no animation or expression through the body and almost being locked. Yeah. And so there's this safe space to actually explore. And sometimes I'll even give the prompt, you know, what is it feel like, you know, to dance with the theme of forgiveness, share that with your partner. Now, as we go into the free dance, dance that feeling and finding that authentic expression through the body. Yeah. And I would also say that in making that bridge from the head to the heart, that for me at the baseline, Koi is really all about feeling. Yeah. And, and that you can't actually do that through the head. Yeah. At some point to feel, you have to feel. <laughs> yeah, you, that's right. You can't think about how you feel. You actually have to feel it. And most people are constantly overriding yeah. so many of the signals that they get from their body. Yeah. And I love what you offer, you know, in terms of health and healing and being a doctor and really encouraging people to have those honest and deeper mm. conversations because... The goal is not to maintain a lifestyle where you negate all of your body systems that are not enjoying it. That's it's right. really to create a lifestyle where your body is in harmony with your lifestyle. Yeah. And a lot of people yeah. are just, no, it's just inconvenient to listen to my body or I can't even imagine a possibility yep. where I could honor my body and do what I need to do in my life. Yeah. And that's really the front lines yeah. of that, of holding that vision for ourselves and our lives that we don't have to negate how we feel and go against ourselves that's right. all the time. And again, it's an and. Yes, it's exactly. An and. So, if, if someone uh, that's watching this would want to join a Koya retreat or uh, find you, how would they do that? The easiest way is to go to koya.love, which is Q-O-Y-A dot L-O-V-E. And there we have a lot of free resources. So there's a free 10 days to love Koya where you get an email every day with a simple five minute video and you can take these bite-sized pieces and bring them and integrate them into your life. There's also a dozen or so 15, 20 minute movement rituals of things like letting go of what doesn't serve you or finding your courage. So that's a great way to try it in the safety of your own living room. Yes. And then there's also find a class. So there are hundreds of Koya teachers all yeah. over. So um, if you're lucky, there's a teacher who teaches in your area. Yeah. And then there's dozens of retreats every year to beautiful places yeah. um, and a full range of weekends, weeks in the U.S. and around the world. So really trusting that if you feel the call to this work, 
a big part is trusting the physical sensation of truth in your body. So if you feel that call to a particular mm -hmm. video or to a particular retreat, part of it is really listening to that feeling. And a lot of times people come and they're like, I don't really know, yeah. but I knew. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, she just called this work. I would tell you it is the most fun work I've ever done. Mm -hmm. So um, it feels to me more like play. So um, if you're interested, definitely go to Koya.love. And she is an incredible, incredible teacher. So thank you. Thank you, Neha. <laughs>